Hi there, welcome to Programming Hustle channel. I'm Nanad and you're watching free Unreal Engine 4 C++ course. In this tutorial series, you will learn how to make video games in Unreal Engine 4 while using C++. You can follow this course even if you don't have any programming experience and I'm going to explain you how later in this video. If you do have some programming experience, then don't worry. I won't bottleneck you by explaining some simple things such as what is integer or what is class and that sort of things. And again, I'm going to explain you how and why later in this video. At the end of every video, I'm going to give you some exercises so you can test your knowledge. And really by doing those exercises, you can become a better programmer and get to know engine a little bit better. So I really recommend you to do those exercises. And just one more thing before we start. If you don't understand some concept, then don't worry. You're not stupid, it's totally normal. But what you need to do is to watch video again or go to Google and search for that topic. And just read, learn, keep going and eventually you're going to, to understand that what, you, what is giving you trouble. So just don't give up and let's get started. So what are we going to do in this episode? We will make an actor that continuously moves up into the air. And what are we going to learn so we can do that? We will learn what is an actor in Unreal Engine. We will review C++ actor class and see what every single line of code means. Now this is the most important part of this tutorial. For everything after this, I am going to give you an explanation, but in future videos I will make video for every single thing and in those videos we will go deeper on these topics. After that we are going to see how to make our game FPS independable. We are going to use delta time variable. We are going to see what is and how to use F vector. We are going to use get actor location and set, ac set actor location methods. We are going to see what is component. And we are going to see what compile means. How to follow if you have no programming experience. If you don't know what something means, then go to the description and there I will send you to a website where you can learn about everything you need to follow this tutorial. And you have a lot to learn if you're a beginner. Welcome back and as you can see we are in Epic Games Launcher right now. So choose Unreal Engine up here and click on this launch button. And hopefully you will need to wait only a couple of seconds. Alright, now this Unreal Project Browser appeared, click on New Project choose C++ and basically Unreal asks us now to choose a template for our project. You can choose first person, puzzle, third person, top down and bunch of other templates but for now we will choose basic code. And of course we need a name for our project so type tutorial 01. This 01 stands for first episode. Click on create project and you will probably have to wait two to three minutes so be patient and wait for both Unreal and Visual Studio to finish. And here we are in this beautiful and powerful engine. As you can see right now we are in level called minimal default and let me show you how you can navigate through this level. Right click and you can rotate camera. W, S, A and D and you can move through this level. Let's create a new level now. But just before we create a new level, let me tell you what an actor is in Unreal. So an actor in Unreal is any object that can be placed into a level. Everything you see in a level is an actor. So this chair is an actor, this table is an actor, floor also, even this lightning here is an actor. Let's create a new level now. Click on File, New Level and choose Default here. Save Selected. So we are in the new level and right now this level is called Untitled. We need to save to give to give this level a different name. So click on Save Current. And new map is okay for me, so I'm just going to click on Save. Now let me just show you how you can move objects around. You probably know that, but in case you don't. So you see those axes and you can use them to move objects around. If you click on this button now you can rotate your object, your actor actually. 
and if you click on this button you can now scale your actor and in this word outliner window you can see our actor and I'm just going to press delete and delete it because we don't need this actor now we want to create a class that will allow our actors to fly high in the sky so we need to get into C++, C++ classes folder and so click on this okay so get to this content browser window click on this choose a path button C++ classes open tutorial 01 right click and choose new C++ class okay so choose parent class so that means that our class will actually expand one of these classes here for now we are going to choose actor and in later videos we will co cover pound character author component and more so choose actor click next and let's call this class let's call it flying furniture and click on create class and this will maybe take a couple of seconds we are in Visual Studio right now and on the right side you can see this Solution Explorer window now this here is your project if you click on source tutorial you can see all your C++ files now as you can see Unreal generated two files from us one is a header file and one is a CPP file if you don't know what header file is, then go to the description and read about header file and learn about header file. So to actually zoom in and zoom out here, just hold control, control key on your keyboard and scroll upwards. So let's go through both CPP and header file. First, we will start with header file. So as you can see here, we got these includes. We are including core minimal that age, acro that age, and genera generated that age. So these three header files. Down here we got this U class and this is a macro. And so what is a macro in C++? So macro in C++ is a fragment of code which has been given a name. Whenever the name of macro is used, it is replaced by the content of that macro. So that macro is actually some code. And what exactly U class macro is? Well, it is a part of Unreal Reflection System. We will cover this system maybe even in next episode. At, and this macro makes engine aware of a class below. So this U class makes engine aware of this class below, our class. And as you can see, we got class declaration right here yet another macro and name of our class. Now you're probably wondering why the hell we have this a pre prefix on our class. Well, it is a part of Unreal naming convention that every class that inherits from actor class needs to have an a prefix. So our class is expanding this actor class. That's what this semicolon means. And that is why we need to have a prefix on our class. Oops. Another macro, macro down here, generated body. So Unreal will put this macro at the beginning of your every, cla every class. And it is, that is necessary in order to have this U class macro work. We got public, public keyboard down here. So everything that is below public keyboard can be accessed from anywhere. We got constructor here. If you don't know what constructor here is, then again, link is in the description. Protected keyboard. Everything that is below protected can be accessed only from object made from class where methods or variables are declared or from objects that are made from classes that expand class where methods and variables are declared. If you cannot wrap your head around this, then go on Google and search for protected keyword. I know it's not that easy. And we got begin play function or method and we got these virtual void and override keywords. Now void is pretty simple, it means that our function doesn't return anything, but <coughs> what does this virtual mean? 
it means that we can rewrite that method in child classes of our class. Begin play is located somewhere in actor.h file and we are rewriting that function in our class right now. Override is introduced in C++11 and override ensures that function is virtual. If not, compiler will, not, will notify you. And what about begin play? Well, this is a method that is called when the game starts or when object is spawned. For example, bullet is spawned when you fire a gun. And last thing on our list is this tick, tick function. So tick is called every single frame. If your game runs at 30 frames per second, this function will be called 30 times in one second. And tick also has this parameter called delta time. And we will actually make a video about delta time soon. But just so you know, we are going to use delta time today. And I will explain you what delta time does, but not how it does later in this video. Let's explore cpp file. We got the constructor here and inside constructor we got primary actor tick that b can never tick variable that is equal to true. And when this variable is equal to true, that means that this tick function will be called every single frame. If this is equal to false, then this tick function will never be called. So if you don't plan to use tick function, and in this video we do plan to use tick function, set this to false and you will even improve performance. You're prob probably wondering what this super keyword means. Well, as you know, this begin play function is actually a virt virtual function. So right here, what we're doing is we are rewriting this function. This function al already exists in upper class. And when we type this super, two columns, a name of function or method, we are actually copying everything from this upper method inside here. And everything down below what we write, we are only expanding this upper begin play method. It's time to write logic and actually make our actor fly. Our goal is to increase Z coordinates, so we must not touch X and Y. We need to get a current location of our actor. And we can do that by calling get actor location method. And get actor location method returns an F vector. So we need to store that information if f vector. So type f vector new location. We're calling this f vector new location equals to get actor location. Okay, so this get actor location function returns an f vector. And if you don't know what f vector is, and you shouldn't if you're a beginner in Unreal, it is a point in 3D space. And as I said before, we only need to increase Z coordinates. So new, oops, new lo location, that's Z plus equals, for example, 20. Okay. And there is one problem with this line here and I will show you why. Okay, here is why. So this tick function gets called every single frame. So if games runs at 30 frames per second, then in one second, Z is increased for 600. And if games runs at 60 frames per second, then in one second, Z is increased for 1200. So gameplay of this game depends on how many frame rates per second you got. And that is terrible. So just multiply this 20 with delta time. And believe it or not, this problem is solved. And as I said before, in the in some of the next episodes, we're going to see how and why delta times works, but not now. We need to use set actor location method right now. So set actor location. And let's look at parameters. First parameter is f vector, so we need to pass our f vector. But there is something interesting in other parameters. They all have this equal sign, which means that they have already defined default values. And we don't need to put our variables except if we want to change those default variables. So if you just type in here new location and don't put any of these variables here, any of these parameters, everything will work fine. So put some icon here and now we just need to compile this code. So you can do it by clicking on this local windows debugger or 
by clicking on this compile button. If you don't know what uh, compile is, well, computer can only read zeros and ones, so when we click on this compile button, our C++ code is transformed into zeros and ones so that computer can actually read that code and execute commands. So click on compile and wait a few seconds. And now we have our class down here, so let's drag and drop our class here and create an object of type flying furniture. And we cannot see in a level our object yet, but we can see our object in this word outliner window. Here it is. In order for act actor object to be visible, it needs to have some kind of component. So click on add component. Well, actually, what is a component? So a component is a piece of functionality that can be added to an actor. For example, you got an actor called car and that car has a component called gas pedal. When you indicate that gas pedal is pressed, car speeds up. Components cannot exist by themselves and they need to be a part of an actor, so they cannot be out on their own. So click on add component, choose static mesh, and you see this static mesh menu, click on none and let's type in table here. Okay, so here it is. Let's actually make another object, actor object of, from our class. So here it is, flying furniture 5, add component, static mesh and let's choose chair now. So here it is. Let's click on play and see what happens. So, as you can see, our code is working and our objects are flying high in the sky. Exercises. We got two. One is easy and another one is a little bit harder. Make an actor class that continuously moves to the right or to the left. Try to make an actor class that makes actor move continuously up and down. This is what I mean when I say up and down. And since this is a little bit harder for beginners, I will actually make a separate video on how to create this. And in that video we will explore how can we actually change movement speed of this actor and range of movement for this actor. Solutions are on the website in the description. Thank you for watching this video, have a great day and see you in next episode.